Welcome to Marseille, a one-of-a-kind place with a heart and a soul all its own. Located on the French Riviera, this southern port city has been at the crossroads of trade and immigration since it was founded in 600 BC. So just how is Marseille's rich history reflected in its culture and cuisine? Join us as we explore the wild culinary wonders of Marseille. If you're in Marseille, you have to make a stop at the old port, Le Vieux Port de Marseille. Here you'll find amazing views of the Mediterranean and the sprawling city around it. These days, the commercial port is located outside of the city center, but traditionally, this is where all the action happened, and you can still find professional fishermen selling their catch of the day. It's the perfect place to meet filmmaker, author, and Marseille foodie, Véran Frediani. Bonjour. Hi, hey, bonjour, bonjour. Thanks for being with us today. You've written this book. It's called Marseille Cuisine Le Monde. Before we dive in, though, uh, give us an idea of the vibe of Marseille. Some people describe it as the anti-Paris. It's just a completely different city, a completely different um, mentality, state of mind. Uh, we have a hot temper, but uh, we, we calm down very quickly, too. Not everybody can like Marseille. It's really a different... Um, sense of time here. We enjoy life. I would say the Marseille identity is stronger than the French identity because here everybody is from somewhere else and that's okay. We are from somewhere else but we are all Marseille. The stereotypical dish of Marseille is bouillabaisse, this fish soup that everyone knows in the south of France but you really want to go beyond the cliches. Tell us a bit more about Marseille's cuisine. Yeah, I think um, the diversity of the population and of the history of the population now is, um, is seen in dishes, you know, or in restaurants. Over the last 10 years, opened lots of restaurants, diverse restaurants, mixing cultures and food cultures in their, in, their dish, in their dishes. And so that's what I think is more interesting right now. Yes, Bouillabaisse has always been here because we are harbor. It represents part of uh, Marseille culture, I would say, but it's an expensive dish today. Most Marseille don't eat Bouillabaisse. That's why I think it's important to see other alternatives. People have traditionally flocked to Marseille for a new beginning. Traditionally, people came from uh, Greece, Italy, uh, North Africa, Algeria, Tunisia. Yes. But it seems like the city is experiencing another renaissance right now. Uh, lots of people are coming to the city. What draws people to Marseille to start again? So here is really, um, uh, from a creative point of view, a uh, land of opportunities to open a restaurant. It's easier, it's cheaper, you have more space. Véran, thank you so much. Avec plaisir. <laughs> so uh, there's an exciting new food scene going on here in Marseille, but it's also important to know your classics. And you're going to take us to meet an institution yes. in Marseille. Let's yes. go meet her. <laughs> First stop on our Marseille food tour, Delphine Roux's restaurant Madi Les Galinettes. Delphine, you've been in the restaurant business for almost 30 years and you're specialized in grandmother dishes from Marseille, like bouillabaisse, which is very famous and was invented in the city. Why is it so typical of Marseille? Parce que la bouillabaisse, c'était un plat très simple, c'était le plat des pêcheurs. En fait, c'était ce qui restait dans les bateaux des pêcheurs. C'est-à-dire que le pêcheur partait la nuit, il allait y jeter ses filets et quand il ramenait, il vendait tous les poissons qu'il pouvait. Et puis il lui restait souvent des petits poissons, des petites rascasses, des petites galinettes qui étaient difficilement vendables à l'unité. Et donc ils ont eu l'idée, je ne sais pas qui a eu l'idée réellement à la base, de faire un bouillon avec ces petits poissons, ce qui sont des poissons de roche, c'est-à-dire des poissons qui vont se nourrir dans les rochers où il y a plein d'algues, donc des poissons qui sont pleins de goût, pleins de saveurs. Donc on fait un bouillon avec ces petits poissons et une fois qu'on a fait ce bouillon qui devient la soupe, on fait pocher les gros poissons dans ce bouillon. Et bouille baisse, ça veut dire bouille baisse en provençal. Quand ça boue, tu baisses. Delphine, we're very lucky because you're going to teach us how to make one of these typical provençal dishes. Mm -hmm. Should we head to the kitchen? Yes, let's go. 
So Delphine, what are you going to make us today? Alors aujourd'hui, on va préparer des artichauts en barigoule. What's barigoule? What does that mean? Alors la barigoule, c'est une façon de préparer des artichauts. À ne pas confondre avec la farigoule. Et la farigoule, c'est le thym en provençal. On commence par éplucher les artichauts. On les rompt. Et ensuite, on enlève les premières feuilles. On enlève le vert, le dur en fait. Puis, on coupe. Watch out, cut yourself. <rire> Et avec une petite cuillère, on enlève le foin. On les met à tremper dans de l'eau avec du citron pour ne pas qu'ils s'oxydent. Puis, on va émincer un oignon, un petit peu d'ail. On va couper des rondelles de carottes. On va faire revenir les lardons dans de l'huile d'olive, le temps que ça colore euh, 5-10 petites minutes. On rajoutera nos cœurs d'artichaut et on va enfin recouvrir avec de l'eau et du vin blanc, plus de vin blanc que d'eau, et des herbes de Provence. Voilà, et on laisse mijoter une petite vingtaine de minutes jusqu'à ce que le cœur soit assez tendre. So it's very easy. Yes, it is. <rire> Delphine, thank you so much for showing us this recipe. Thank you to you. So uh, Marseille has food going for it, but that's not it. Here are some other fun facts about the city. Yeah. Located on the beautiful Mediterranean coast, Marseille is France's second biggest metropolis. It's the country's sunniest city and the oldest. Massalia, as it was called, was founded around 600 BC by Greek settlers from Phocia, an ancient city on the Aegean Sea. These days, it's still referred to as La Cité Phocéenne. Marseille boasts France's biggest commercial port. Trade, as well as immigration waves from Southern Europe and North Africa, have made the city into a Mediterranean melting pot. Marseille is famous for its food and culture, as well as its soap, a business that dates back to the Middle Ages. In the late 17th century, King Louis XIV set standards for a now protected trademark, Le Savon de Marseille, a hard soap made from vegetable oil, mainly olive oil, that smells delicious. Traditionally, Marseille has been seen as a counterweight to the capital, Paris, when it comes to political power, sports, especially soccer, and a generally more laid-back way of life. It's also a rival when it comes to beautiful landmarks. There's a lot to see in the city, like the Notre Dame de la Garde Basilica, the gorgeous Calanque National Park, or numerous art centers like the Museum, a museum dedicated to Mediterranean art and culture. It's definitely worth a stop on your next trip to France. When you wander around Marseille, it's clear that this is a gritty, thriving metropolis with a distinctive working-class character and southern French soul. Marseille is also a city in metamorphosis. Recent years have seen a series of major urban renewal projects which have drawn a wave of artists, entrepreneurs and chefs with ambitious projects. Sébastien Richard, bonjour. Bonjour. You created this restaurant, Le République, where you serve seasonal Mediterranean dishes with a modern twist. But solidarity is really a key part of your philosophy. Tell us about that. Bienvenue déjà au République, qui est le premier restaurant solidaire en France où il y a une mixité sociale. Donc le but est de pouvoir, euh, dans un même temps, dans un même espace, de pouvoir mélanger des personnes issues de classes sociales différentes. Donc on a des personnes qui viennent, euh, qui passent par le biais d'une réservation, qui vont dépenser entre 25 et 35 euros, entrée, plat, dessert, une cuisine plutôt orientée méditerranéenne, et d'autres personnes qui viennent par le biais d'associations avec qui on conventionne. Ces personnes-là qui sont donc des bénéficiaires, ces personnes-là ont la même expérience, on va dire, d'un restaurant, donc même accueil, même service, même cuisine, même boisson, et ces personnes-là payent un euro. And Sébastien, solidarity is also part of your hiring process here. En effet, euh, on, la deuxième particularité du restaurant, on est entreprise d'insertion. C'est-à-dire qu'au euh, sein euh, des effectifs, aujourd'hui, il y a 29 personnes qui travaillent. Il y en a euh, 15 qui sont des salariés en droit commun et 14 qui sont des personnes qui sont en parcours d'insertion. 
et que l'on forme euh, au métier de la restauration. L'idée est de pouvoir euh, montrer ce qu'est Marseille aujourd'hui, montrer que euh, Marseille a cette ouverture d'esprit, une mixité vraiment euh, sociale, oui, par rapport au restaurant, mais une mixité culturelle, une mixité euh, euh, d'esprit, une mixité de solidarité, une mixité de gens. So your restaurant really sums up the spirit of Marseille, and it also has a particularity, which is that it has a boulodrome, which is where you play pétanque, the first underground boulodrome of Marseille, and we're going to go check it out. Tonk is a French institution. Some would even say it's a way of life. It's really fun and easy to play. You can either play one-on-one -on -one or in teams of two or three. I'll be solid, you'll be stripes. First step, you draw a line in the sand and you throw this little guy. It's a round little wooden jack or ball that's called a bouchon or a cochonnet, a little pig. Then you take the metal balls and you throw them as close as you can to the cochonnet. Whoever gets closest wins the points and whoever gets to 13 points first wins. All right, let's play, Jeannie. All right, you're on. First, you throw the cochonnet. So there are two techniques when you're throwing the ball. You can either pointer, which means you try to get your ball as close to the cochonnet as possible. Then there's tiré when you try to knock your opponent's metal ball out of the way. So satisfying. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Oh, you moved it closer. <laughs> You little boule then? You can kiss that boule goodbye. <laughs> Pétanque is a great game to play with friends during apéro, pre-dinner drinks, especially with a local Marseille specialty, pastissa. And that is our next stop. Cheers! Guillaume Ferroni, thank you so much for being with us today. You started the Atelier Ferroni, where you make all sorts of alcohols and spirits like uh, gin and rum, and of course, pastis. Yes. What's the history behind what we call the Petit Jaune? So the pastis, the Petit Jaune, is the success of, of absinthe. Absinthe was the original anisid uh, spirit in France. It was a huge spirit, and it was forbidden in 1815. And so the producers of, of absinthe, they started to make other products, and that's the way the pastis appeared. So it's a success of, of absinthe. And many of our viewers might know of absinthe from the reputation it has of making people crazy. Is there any truth to that? Not really. <laughs> it, ma it makes you crazy if you drink probably three bottles. So okay. normally you're off before drinking the three bottles. But the, the thing is that there is a molecule which is dangerous called trion. It was, a, it was the, reason, uh, the legal reason to, to forbid uh, absinthe. The real reason is that Absent was a competitor to wine. And during the 19th century, there was phylloxera, this little bug that destroyed the wine yards. And so the wine lobby asked the, uh, the, forbid, the interdiction of absent. Right. And then came the pastis. Here at the Atelier Ferroni, you teach people how to assemble their own pastis, and you're going to teach us. It's not me. It's my colleague Adrien, which is the master assembler. We show you how to make your own pastis. Awesome. Hey, let's do it. Bonjour. 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 So, Adrien, what are the ingredients in pastis? Alors, dans le pastis, les ingrédients principaux, c'est l'anis, le réglisse. Donc, c'est ce que vous avez ici, c'est la nettole. Et après, vous avez du coup le sucre aussi. Voilà. À partir de ça, vous appelez pastis. En provençal, le mot pastis veut dire mélange. Donc, là, on va réaliser notre propre mélange à partir de macérat de plantes fraîches. On va commencer du coup par la verveine citronnelle, okay. qui est l'une des plantes qu'on utilise le plus. On va poursuivre par le romarin. It's really rosemary. It smells delicious. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I feel like a mad, mad scientist. <laughs> Ça va pouh. <rire> Là, on va terminer par une plante, alors, qui est un peu l'historique du passé, puisque c'est la plante. Donc là, pour terminer la recette, on va rajouter du coup la base pastis, donc avec l'anis, le réglisse et le sucre. That smells like pastis. It smells like black licorice. Et là, du coup, vous avez vraiment le nom mélange pour le pastis. 
Donc on, on pastisse le pastis. Voilà, c'est ça. Wow. <rire> Ça doit rentrer, ça doit rentrer. Vous venez du coup de faire votre propre bouteille de pastis. Yay Chaos <rire> yeah. So, we've mixed our pastis. What's the best way to drink it Alors, pour le pastis Château des Cresseaux, la meilleure façon de le déguster, c'est en digestif fin de repas, donc plutôt le consommer pur sans eau. Après, sur la normalité des pastis, c'est plus le consommer pastis au riz glaçon. Voilà. And you can drink this different ways too. You can add things to this, right si vous rajoutez du sirop d'orge à l'intérieur, ça se rappellera la moresque. Et après, il y a différentes variantes. Vous avez, si vous mettez du sirop de menthe, vous avez le côté perroquet. Sirop de grenadine, le côté tomate. Donc ça, c'est un peu les différentes variations pour déguster un pastis. So you can jazz up your pastis, but it's really good when it's pure too. Cheers. Cheers. And this being France, we have to remind you to drink responsibly. Thank you so much, Adrien. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Well, that wraps it up for this special French Connections in Marseille. And a big thank you to our team, Louise Morer and Georges Yazbek. Is there a region of France you'd like us to discover? If so, why don't you reach out on social media and we'll try and make it the next stop on our culinary Tour de France. And we'll see you very soon for another episode of French Connections Plus. France 24, more than ever before, is your window onto the world. Liberté, égalité, actualité.